What is up everyone, Ants3 here and I am back with some more videos and what I'm going to be showing today are the work slash intel files from the Call of Duty Codes campaign and I have seen these myself and what I have noticed is that they seem to foreshadow Infinity Ward's next game and since Sledgehammer is making what I hope is Modern Warfare 4 this year and Treyarch is supposed to be making what appears to be Black Ops 3 next year I think that by 2016 we're going to see Infinity Wars next game which it might be called Ghost 2 or whatever they call it this time but anyways I'm just gonna go ahead and show the video right here and all the intel files that are from from the whole campaign if you want to know where they're at just go ahead and try to click on the link in the description that I'll leave about where all the work intel files are located throughout the whole game and I hope you guys enjoy the video and hopefully you can try to come up with any ideas for what if new war has in store for us so other than that enjoy the video like comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time how you doing Gabriel are you sleeping all right I'm sleeping fine Honestly, Doc, you guys need to take a step back on this and let us do our jobs. Soldiers who've been through a traumatic experience tend to indulge in their work almost to an excessive level. You ever seen combat, Doc? I've seen what it does to people. Well, that's the problem. You've never had the choice of life and death in your hands. A little squeeze of the trigger and you've taken a life from this earth. In an instant. A living, breathing person is nothing more than a grease spot. Now why don't you imagine that happened to a friend? A brother? A father? Someone who saved your life multiple times and a little piece of brass just takes them away. Forever. Lights out. So why don't you just write down whatever you think they should do with me, Doc? Tell them I have PTSD or whatever the hell you want. But when that happens to a man on my team, doesn't make me reconsider why I do what I do. Fact is, it makes me want to find the bastard that did it and show him why he messed with the wrong men. We do bad things to bad people, Doc. The sooner you understand that, the sooner we can get back to work. We've been behind this wall for far too long. Now people have to decide on being locked in here, or killed out there. We found another one of them today. The pits. The Federation fills them with civilians. They question them first, and whether they have answers or not, well... They all end up in the same place. Our commanding officer thinks the Federation is looking for other ways into the city. Dallas was taken in the same way. A little part of me can't help it. Think this is a message. So we're going back outside the wall. Someone who knows how we operate is targeting us. I want to know who. I just hope we're prepared for what's coming. I have been to no man's land more times than I can remember now. And it still gives me nightmares. I am convinced we will find what we need to. The effort will not be in vain. However, the captain has been acting more aggressive lately. He nearly killed a young soldier for reporting in too late. Granted, the soldier required punishment, but the captain saw fit to prevent him from seeing ever again. This place makes him act differently. He gets paranoid, like someone is watching him. <laughs> Best to stay on his good side then. I want to know where it's at, Ajax. You know I'll find it eventually. Come on, why put yourself through this? I'm not telling you shit! Ah, uh, you want to see how tough you are? I get that. But you don't need to die here today. I want to save that for tomorrow. Besides, everyone breaks, Ajax. So you want to tell me where the safe house is? Let's keep going. The wall will break today. Yes, sir. We're well ahead of schedule. Our dig sites proved to be useful. 
That's what Victor tells me. He's got everything he needs now. Victor Ramos, yes, sir. I'm on my way to the shop to meet with him. He says full-scale production by the end of the month. Yes, sir. I understand. I'll take care of it. Rourke says we're going to Caracas. The lion's den. The Federation leader, Diego Almagro, ordered the execution of UN peacekeepers. Twenty of them. After ripping them to pieces, he dumped their bodies in the ocean and sent them drifting back to us. We got the message. They called up the team and want us to take care of the problem. Our way. Rourke's calling it Operation Return to Sender. I've never seen him so driven. He really wants this guy dead. Let's hope they do a better job this time. Victor is confident his prototype will work, and I agree. Things are moving fast now. It's odd when the moment finally arrives. I still get that queasy feeling in the pit of my stomach, even after all these years. They'll go after him first. They'll break him to get to me. But now that his work is complete, you know, he's become expendable. So let them come, let them find him, and find me waiting to bury them in the same grave they dug for their leader. Ever since Ajax's death, I haven't been able to shake this feeling of unease. Rourke's alive, and he's hunting us. We managed to track him down to Mexico, but I can't help but feel something's wrong. Jaysock has to have him, so they're sending in the team once again. Lysa's boys, Hesh, and Logan. And I think of how they're paying for the sins we committed. How Elias is putting them in the sights of a madman. And how they might be our only hope to stop him. We have got the green light from the dome. The satellite array can go operational. It is an impressive display of power and technology. I cannot help but feel inspired when I go there. How can men build such things? Invisible data controlling machines. Machines that can destroy with such blunt force. The rockets themselves have been upgraded as well. They can reach their destination 150% faster than before. Not super exciting, but at those speeds, the operation can be completed in a matter of days. So far, I am pleased with our results. I think my superiors will be as well. They're sending me to Caracas for Federation Day. <laughs> there is much to celebrate. What happened? I don't know, sir. They came in through the security checkpoint. And we... 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 we Spit it out, soldier. We, we couldn't find them. One second they were here, and then they, they just disappeared. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know what happened. Everything got so chaotic. You know our laws, son. You failed to protect your brothers. You joined them in death. No, please. No, please. Please don't do this. Take him to the river. No! We were able to pick up some comms traffic thanks to the intel you found. What follows is a distress call from a nearby ship in the Federation fleet. Sir, we have multiple alarms originating from the Atlas platform. They say they're under attack. What about the perimeter forces in the area? No response, sir. Get the Admiral and tell them we're under attack by American forces. I need all available resources to location. Now! Yes, sir. December 10th, 2018. The test of the new Aegis class prototype was successful. The real breakthrough was the addition of the sonic pulse to the bow of the ship. The impact of the pulse is strong enough to crush organs or shatter bone. 
We were fortunate enough to have test subjects donate their pain to science. With this ship, we can keep our eyes focused above the water. Although my employer, Rourke, thinks I am underestimating our enemy. I told him we ran dozens of tests without a single soul avoiding the sonar bolts. Still, he seems to believe there are flaws, and certain men can exploit those flaws. Well, back to the drawing board. Improvements to the Odin system far exceed what I originally expected. With the help of our quantum computers, Victor managed to shrink everything down, make it smaller, more efficient. Multiple firing platforms, all connected through the central hub, low-key. This war's coming to an end, albeit a catastrophic one. <laughs> Much in the same way it started. The worst thing a man can have is hope. It's a vicious little devil. You can be alone, broken, beaten, dying. But it forces its way into your brain. Keeps you hanging on. Eventually, reality sets in. Overpowers it. Shows you it's not necessary, or wasn't even there to begin with. When a man has lost his hope and sees his fate for what it truly is, only then can he accept death and greet him as an equal. Ajax learned that lesson. <laughs> the look in his eyes when he told me about this place. <laughs> I'll teach the rest of them the same lesson. David Hesh Walker, Lieutenant, United States Army. Still hard to imagine the world without that. Nothing makes sense without him here. I keep replaying that day over and over in my head. I just would have been stronger, a little faster. He'd still be here with me. And the only thing keeping the guild away is the thought of finding work and making him pay. We're launching an operation to take him down. They hit the Federation hard. Wherever he is, Logan and I will find him, and we'll send him back to whatever part of hell he crawled out of. They're sending everything they have to stop us now. One way or another, the tide's about to turn. I've hunted my own men down, taking them away from this world by force if necessary. And now they want vengeance. Let them come. Let them suffer the same fate as Ajax, as Elias, his youngest, though, Logan. He's different than the others. Boss wants him alive. A hundred soldiers for one more ghost, he says. <laughs> now there's a man even I can follow. The satellite array allows us to control it from the ground, giving us a safer approach than what was originally planned. All firing platforms can be utilized at the same time, or individually, should the occasion present itself. We have carved out a section of Earth under the array for a command center. We can even launch platforms from the same area. We have sent up so many of these things that I have started to lose track. From reports gathering from the crew, everything is running smoothly. I would expect nothing less. Gabriel Rourke, I have been trained by your government to be a weapon, trained to kill and destroy, all in the name of liberty and justice. Even surrender my very life in service to your country. But I'm not one of you. The just have turned their backs and become deaf to your cries. Who then will show them justice? Who will show you the liberty they have promised? The weapon they have created will be their undoing. But do not fear this. Do not fear me. It is only natural. Like the collapse of Rome, your cities will crumble, and there will be great sorrow. But from the ashes of this diseased metropolis, a rebirth will occur. 
It will be paid for with blood and steel. Liberty must be restored. I am Gabriel Rourke, and I am here to show you the true meaning of justice. My name is Elias T. Walker. I'm a captain in the United States Army. Retired. Supply and requisition. Yeah, my kids always tell me I count cans of food all day. <laughs> There's a bit more than that, I can promise you. Can you tell us more about your kids? Sure. There's David, my oldest. He's 28. Likes to go by the name Hesh. He, well, he... He joined up the day he turned 18. He's one of the best soldiers we have in the field today. Then again, maybe I'm biased. My youngest, that's Logan. He, um, well, he reminds me a lot of his mom. Logan always follows David. I mean, always. There was this one time Three of us were walking along the beach down in Point Loma, down south. I was leading, David was behind me, and Logan behind him. But when I turned around, there were only two sets of footprints. Yeah, Logan had been walking exactly, I mean exactly, in his brother's footsteps. <laughs> like I said, he always follows his brother. I mean, I, I don't remember a time when he didn't have us training for something. And we'd hunt in the woods for days on end, finding our own shelter, our own water, our own weapons. Yeah, you get the idea. You heard Hell Week? Yeah. And this is more like Hell Year, after year, after year. But I don't mean to make it sound so bad. I mean, this is what we wanted. Dad always said we could quit at any time, go grab some fast food and pick out in front of the TV all night. But Logan and I, you know, we wanted more. Out there, we learned to guard each other, to hunt, speak without speaking. And we became men. We were a team. And every time we came out of the woods, Dad would ask us what we learned. Always protect each other. But we never forgotten. Logan's got my back, and I got his. He's my brother. I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Why do you fight for America? Right, right. <laughs> That's a good one. We had a new guy about six years back. Kept talking about making the world safer. World peace or some stupid shit like that. Two months later, he's handing out shoes in Ramadi and gets gunned down by a 12-year-old. Peace doesn't exist. It can't happen. I'm sure you're familiar with the devil. Well, before old Whitebeard kicked his ass out of heaven, he went to war against him. A war in heaven. See, this shit existed before we did. War's ancient. No sense in trying to change it. When people ask me why I fight, I always tell them the same damn thing. I like winning. 